Today we're unmasking the masks Scooby-Doo style. There are a lot more FNAF victims than you first thought, so let's run through every single one of them. Although this sounds like an easy question to answer, it isn't. Firstly, five appears everywhere, meaning, there's a possibility that there is more than one group of five missing children in the games. We know of one set, supposedly the core five animatronics, who are Gabriel, Jeremy, Susie, Fritz and Cassidy, and they are part of the missing children's incident in 1983. However, when the puppet gives gifts and gives life to them, the fifth child isn't there, until you look at the last frame before the jump scare in the minigame. And the more minigames you look at, the more dead children you see everywhere. For example, look at the tape Kate to the children minigame. We see another victim of Purple Guy, probably the first, who we know possesses the puppet. And with that, all of the souls are freed in the Happiest Day minigame. This probably takes place in some sort of heaven, where the souls are finally rested and freed. However, have you ever stopped to ask yourself why the mediocre melodies are here? These five weird rip-off animatronics, which even Neth Bear says in his dialogue are also in this heaven with them. Why? Because they are also children's spirits. Need more proof? Listen to the mediocre melodies in UCN. This is how it feels, and you get to experience it over and over and over again, forever. I will never let you leave. There's two voice layers, the main one, and then one that sounds a lot like Baby. In a weird twist, the Trash Gang also have circus baby voices. But that's a can of worms for another day. However, this to me, symbolizes that the animatronics are possessed just like the original animatronics. If you need more proof, Mr. Hippo talks a lot about the afterlife in his various lengthy speeches. So that makes 11 dead people in the story so far. Continuing in game order, we see William jump into a spring trap suit and die. And if you say he doesn't die, explain how dropping to the floor and continuous bleeding has no chance of death. Which adds another two hour counter. In FNAF 4, we see the horrific event of the bite of 83, where the bite victim actually has a flat line at the end of the game. We know he went to hospital because of the pills IV in Flowers Easter eggs, and I'm pretty sure that giant Fred Bear Mouth is gonna do some severe brain damage to a young toddler. I'm no anatomist, but I'm pretty sure that's gonna penetrate the skull, probably crush it with that much force. But science, you say, I thought Michael was the BV. To that I say, yes he is, but don't worry. There's an explanation that I'll talk about soon in another video. So with a bite of 83, that makes 13 deaths. Next, let's talk about the other bite, the bite of 87. We hardly know anything about it, so is it okay to say that it caused death? Well. Remember that phone guy in FNAF1 says that it's amazing how the human body can live without the frontal lobe, meaning the victim didn't die, but just lost his frontal lobe. Leaving out death counter still on 13. Sister location is weird, because it's hard to tell if they are possessed or not. We know for a fact that Elizabeth died to baby, as she had a change in eye color as soon as Elizabeth was eaten. Does that mean that all of the fun times are possessed? Not necessarily, because the fun times were created to lure children in and then kill them, shown by the blueprints. So, they were designed to kill, meaning they don't need Remnant to perform these actions. However, Ballora seems like a very motherly animatronic with her song, and even in UCN where she says these are strange circumstances for us to be together again, and if we play as William, then it would make sense for her to be his wife. 
and that, my friends, is pretty much everyone. Mangle is also killed, but he is a dog so she doesn't count. Ha ha, see what I did there. So that brings our total up to a whopping 15. Now you may be thinking oh, I'm stretching too much with this theory, but I'm about to prove you wrong. I'm going to show you the easy way to find out all of these murders, and it's something big that we have all missed. I present to you, the FNAF3 Death Mini Games. In every mini game, there are multiple endings, but by getting the good ending for each one, you get to give a child a cake. These five children are the core five animatronics, as I talked about. In Mangle's quest, we see a strange puppet figure. This represents the death of the puppet, quite clearly. Then, there are five cupcake silhouettes in Chickis Party. This represents another five children who possess the mediocre melodies. In the Stage 01 minigame, Shadow Bonnie can enter an empty room, which represents the place where Spring Bonnie ended up killing William. And finally, we come to the most spine-chilling one of them all. In Balloon Boy's Air Adventure, there's a mysterious tree silhouette with three more Balloon Boys surrounding it. To my knowledge, nobody else knows why this is here, but what if the tree represented a family? Like a literal family tree. In particular, the Afton family. One balloon boy represents Michael as the bite victim, another represents the sister, baby or Elizabeth. And the final one represents Ballora Mrs. Afton, creating a complete family rested and buried. Now I know what you're thinking, William Afton is in the family too. But, he probably isn't anymore after his bad doings. Also, what about the foxy brother? Well, I'll explain this in more depth in the next video but to put it simply, just like what we see in The Immortal and the Restless, William disowns him, and the reason is because Michael is a synthetic human. But for the rest of that theory make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. And I'll see you all next time.